do that bad lighting here. All right, get that fixed. All right, peace and good morning. Let's see where we are. Who's up? Who's up? Who's up? We got. Ooh, I don't see anything yet. Let's take a peek. Take a peek. Take a peek. Time, time to get. Time to get. Getting it together. All right, peace and good morning. I right, see we're up everywhere. We're up on Twitter. We're up on Twitch. We are up on Facebook, we're up on LinkedIn, and we're up on YouTube. Peace and good morning. I'm Shah, a.k.a. Dragon's Pitchfork. This is Getting It Together. Bear with me as a second. As you see, I'm getting it together. I think I'm going to actually start off like this more often, man. Just actually be getting it together in the process of getting started. Um, today's topic, or today's show, today we are sponsored by, I don't know how I want to say that yet, I'm figuring it out. I'm getting it together, right? Today we are sponsored by. No, we're not sponsored by, but today we are looking into AI. We're sponsored by Curiosity about AI. Um, I'm going to look into Chat GPT together. I figured this would be another one of my sidecar days where I take you with me on one of my um, investigations into software, um, technology, tools, whatever. Um, it's on, it's been on my research list for over a week and I figure one way that I can make sure I do it is if I just do it live, kills two birds with one stone, I get some content, uh, at the same time, I, um, and maybe through getting content, I get more connections with different new and different people who, you know, may be able to, uh, vibe with me. Maybe it's somebody that, um, I vibe with on a technical front. Maybe it's somebody that I vibe with on just an aesthetic front because you like the aesthetics of, uh, you know, what what I'm playing with uh, visually. Uh, maybe it's that we vibe because we're we're both, you know, into music. I don't know, but I'm trying to create connections with more and more people. And I know the auto focus is going crazy over there. I'm gonna work on that in a second, bear with me. Um, it's actually auto focus is my first priority. I'm trying to see how I can do that now. I gotta catch it when it's focused right, boom. Nope, it's not out of focus, out of focus. That's what you want to focus on me. Focus on me. Still blurry, huh? Come on. One, two, three. It's a little blurry. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell without my glasses anyway, right? So how about let's use the glasses to do this. It looks pretty clear to me. I could do with better lighting, I think. I think I get some, some lighting over on this side. As a matter of fact, let me fix that. See how this works. Get a big light source is what they say, right? How's that? Any better? Get a little shadow. Get a little dramatic something over there. But I'd, probably, I'd rather have the light coming from that side and get the, let the shadow kind of be on this side. So let's experiment with that. Taking you guys on my journey. If you, this is what I mean by aesthetics. Taking you on my journey, learning um how to do some dope video stuff too, some creative but professional video you know that you see me figuring things out that's part of the whole aesthetic and theme for getting it together too i don't have to have it perfect it doesn't have to be perfect we can learn together love to see some of your tips ideas one of the things that used to freeze me up was trying to always have things together before i before i um would share with the world before I would do something. And a lot of people call that paralysis by analysis. I'm starting to uh, feel that same way. Let's see how that light looks. It's a little bit better. I'll probably tilt it down a little bit. They say you shouldn't have your light too high above your subjects, um, but there's also a lighting technique called the Rembrandt. I don't know if I can get that right now. I don't, have, I don't think I have a big enough screen. If I change the size of, yeah, see, if I change the size of that screen, it gets out of there. So we'll skip it for now. We'll accept what we have for today, and I'll experiment a little bit more. That way we can get on with what today's about. Today, I'm getting familiar with a software tool named ChatGTP, GPT. 
I heard somebody say GTP one time, and uh, I think that I got infected by that. But um, yeah, it's an AI tool. I'm hearing a lot of people talk about it. And honestly, I haven't heard much about it the past few days because I haven't been on social media much. So I'm even, squirrel memory, I'm even forgetting some of what people do with it, uh, some of the examples. So I'm really going to be walking into this as if I've never seen this before. Um, but what I figure I'll start with is I'm going to share my Google, well, my Brave browser. Remember, I'm using Brave because they say it is more secure than Chrome. You can also earn crypto by from using Brave, um, a form of their crypto. Um, and apparently Chrome, especially with um, crypto wallets, can be very risky. I learned that uh, from one of the web three gurus i've been um in contact with in my in my journeys here but let's try picture in picture with brave browser on screen boop, 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 boop. i will say one thing man i'm getting a little more comfortable on on doing this stuff i, I was really really uncomfortable being on camera um i'm still not comfortable being on camera but i'm not as uncomfortable as I used to be. So I'm gonna see if I can keep this window up so I can see what's going on here. Looks like the browser is about the right size. The browser is a little too big, so let's get it shrunken down so it fits. I'm using OBS to broadcast this through restream.io. Um, that's a service you can use to broadcast to multiple um, stream social media sites. I'm streaming and broadcasting to Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, um what else twitter youtube twitch linkedin uh facebook i think that's it should be five places um i'm doing this so that i can prepare for next year what i'm doing with the communities or teams the network i'm building that's that's what it is actually we're a social impact network got that through some of the workshop and i've been doing this week hfr is a social impact net pack network that's one of the teams i'm working on doing this for uh grayskull is one of the teams that we partner with and work with as as a social impact network. We're also partnering and working with uh, my homeboy King Mizzo, who's an excellent hip hop artist. We are partnering and working with NFT Voices uh, to help change the narrative and to help set the narrative actually in the NFT space or the Web3 space. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Sick and Black, my production duo with uh, DJ Uncle Sickness. Uh, but all, you know, I'm not here to talk much about me. We're here to learn, right? So I've got my browser open and what I would normally do in case some of you don't do much research, but you're trying to figure out like, how would somebody else research? I'll show you my techniques. Maybe somebody can give me tips on how to be more effective at searching. Uh, so this isn't anything special, really. I'm just going to start with the simple, the simplest thing. Chat GPT. I'm going to look at look up the uh, phrase. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in quotes. That way, you're only going to get anything that has these two words in this specific order. All right, boom. So we can start with a video, but I am not jumping at a 30 minute video. I see there's a four minute and 15 second video i i would probably jump to that but since we're on here and we're talking i'm gonna i'm gonna talk through a little bit more of what i would do here as well here this five secrets to writing with chat gpt i would probably bookmark that i would probably look at both of these but I'd probably start me i would probably start with the third one with the five secrets to writing with Ch chat gpt usually in videos like that they'll give you a quick introduction and that'll give me a a, a basic idea how to do something that'll kind of give me a faster on-ramp but what is would probably be the more familiar thing that i would do if, well it would probably be what i would do if i weren't familiar with ai or if i hadn't seen it all over seen examples of people using it all over my social media feeds um but before i would click on either one of those the people ask section is always helpful to me um what is chat gpt app i would probably look at that and actually i'm gonna look at that one one thing real quick i know a lot of people are not fans of google i haven't found a new sub search engine that i that um to use yet it hasn't been that serious to me but i'm curious about why people aren't interested in google uh, uh so i'll probably ask some ask some questions of some people and, and get a list of the reasons why people don't rock with google chrome um 
but let's see what we have as the answer. What is chat GPT app about this app? The artificial intelligence chat bot powered by GPT three technology is designed to entertain and engage users in conversation. Whether you're looking for a new friend or just want to kill some time, Chatio, Chat GPT, AI Chatter is the perfect app for you. Question that run comes to mind immediately for me is what is GPT-3 technology, right? I'm sure they wrote it that way so that you'd have to look into that anyway. But let's, uh, and that is an app on the Google Play Store. What, grabs, what makes me feel kind of weird about it is the name of it is Chatio. I wonder if it's made by the actual, whoever actually made Chat GPT. Uh, no idea. Not going to go in that, down that rabbit hole. What is Chat GPT 3? I am curious about that. Let's check that out. What is Chat GPT 3? It is one of the largest and most powerful language processing AI modes to date. With 175 billion parameters, its most common use so far is creating Chat GPT, a highly capable chatbot. To give you a little taste of its most basic ability, we asked GPT-3's chatbot to write its own description, as you can see above. Interesting. That I'm curious about. So before I go to any video, I'm going to look at that, but I'm going to take it into a new tab. This is how I get trapped with so many open tabs. I know my you can't even see my other browsers right now, but tabs, tabs, tabs. Let's take a peek. More options. I don't want to accept any of this stuff i this this turns me off immediately like reject all how about that i don't want to see any of your cookies i don't know you and i don't have time to investigate you uh chat gpt everything you need to know about open ai's gpt3 tool um also clicking reject all just because i clicked it doesn't mean that that was the right thing to do uh somebody who was malicious could have written that web page to say when you click uh reject all that means you give free and complete total access to your computer so irresponsible move on my part uh but let's move chat gpt everything you need to know about open ai's gpt3 tool open ai is making headlines again with its latest viral use of artificial intelligence what is chat gpt and how does it work okay for years, there's been a worldwide fear of artificial intelligence and its impending takeover of the world. Who knew that it would start with the world of art and literature? And that's actually how I've come across um, and started learning about ChatGPT is because I'm in the art space um, and I'm connecting with a lot of people in the Web3 space, um, a lot of whom are writers, so literature. Um, I'm seeing a lot of these people and a lot of people who are business owners, entrepreneurs talking about how they're using tools, AI to make themselves more efficient, to cut business expenses, to, you know, to just do some, some of the annoying, small, I guess, building block tasks for their businesses. So I'm, I'm interested in learning about this so I can see if I can use AI or in order to use computers in a different way to achieve my goals. Uh, I also will have to do some research on the ethics behind all this stuff, I'm sure, in order to feel right about it. Um, so this is a starting point for my research here. I finally, I've been talking about getting started on actually doing active research on this instead of just ingesting content from people for, for weeks now, probably months. Now I'm actually, this is my on-ramp right here. All right, uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Where are we at right now? After months of dominating the internet with its AI image generator, Dolly e 2 or Dolly 2 I'm not sure how, how to pronounce it, OpenAI is back in everyone's social media feeds thanks to ChatGPT, a chatbot made using the company's technology, GPT-3. You know what I noticed here? Is ChatGPT is all one word or not even a word but it's all together there's no spaces between the chat and gpt so my google search was a bad one i guess so to speak luckily it, it handled it let me stop saying the name of the of the company i'm using the search too we don't want to advertise for free right because we don't want to get everybody using their products if we don't endorse them 
um working on that so um it's not exactly the catchiest name and could easily be the title of a random computer component or vague legal reference but gpt3 is actually the internet's best known language processing ai model so what is gpt3 and how is it used to make chat gpt what is it able to do and what in the world uh, is a language processing ai model Everything you need to know about OpenAI's latest viral baby can be found below. What is GPT-3 and ChatGPT-3? Oh, and ChatGPT. Look at all, all this. Uh, yeah. Chat, what is a description of ChatGPT? So this is the actual AI that wrote this answer itself, I guess, right? Uh, so ChatGPT, let's open it all the way. ChatGPT, can you see this? Yeah, make sure you can see it without my window getting in the way. See if I can shrink myself a little bit. Oop, oop. All right. Chat GPT is an op is a conversational open AI system that is based on the GPT three generative pre pre trained transformer three language model. Interesting. Curious about how they came up with that name. Hopefully that'll be part of my research. I'm not going to jump in that rabbit hole. Normally I would. Uh, it is a capable. It is capable of generating human-like responses to text input, allowing it to engage in natural language conversations with users. Unlike other chatbots, which are typically limited to pre-programmed responses, ChatGPT can generate responses on the fly, allowing it to have more dynamic and varied conversations. Because it's based on the powerful GPT-3 model, ChatGPT has a vast knowledge base and is able to understand and respond to a wide range of topics. Okay, so I'm, I'm, let me digest that. Give me a sec. Capable generating human. Couple chatbots. All right, so it's basically a chatbot uh, stepped up version of. I don't know if you've ever tried to chat with a company for tech support. This is my first impressions. Is you know, when you, um, if you've ever tried to use a website, tech support on a website, how you get these answers that don't seem to make sense to what you typed in. Usually that's a chat bot, you know, uh, a bot that's designed. Hey, but I'm sorry, am I in your way? Here. Come on. Here you go, buddy. Is that needed this bed? Um... I lost my, my train of thought, but yeah, it's basically a chat bot. If you, um, if you played with, uh, one of those company websites where you try to talk to support through there and, and it takes a while before you start getting answers that make sense. Um, you know, it's the chat bot hands off to the human, so to speak, I guess. Um, but let's, let's keep going on the research, right? So G GPT three generative pre-trained transformer three is a state of the art language processing AI model developed by open AI. It is capable of generating human-like text and has a wide range of applications, including language translation, language modeling, and generating, generating text for applications such as chatbots, what we just talked about. It is one of the largest and most powerful language processing AI, AI models to date with 175 billion parameters. My goodness, Yo, that's crazy. 175 billion parameters, you understand? you the humans could not have coded that that couldn't have been written by humans all by itself I, I don't believe that every parameter could be could have been written by a human so you had to have a computer to help write 175 billion parameters of code in your code i imagine these are these are hypotheses guess first impressions right um so i wonder if they used ai to help write this so if the computer if the program helped write itself or if they just use functions and, and, you know, they were just able to manipulate computers in ways that the humans still did it all, but they just used programming to make it happen. Curious. May not ever get the answer, but I'm curious. All right. It's most common use so far is creating chat GPT. Boom. There we go. So it created this answered my question already maybe i should just shut up and read right <laughs> i'm just playing wow 
Most powerful language. Wow, it's an AI model then, okay. To give you a little taste of its most basic ability, we asked ChatGPT3's chatbot to write its own description, as you can see above. It's a little bit boastful, but completely accurate and arguably well-written. That's what we read on the Google page before we came over here. In less corporate terms, that's what we want. GPT-3 gives a user the ability to give a trained AI a wide range of worded prompts. These can be questions, requests for a piece of writing on a topic of your choosing, or a huge number of other worded requests. This makes me wonder if like, I could use this to write the framework from my book, Autobiography. That would be interesting. Especially if I could say, write it with the theme, with X theme. And then I could just go and use maybe the chapter structure that they give and see what kind of chapter structure it comes up with. And then I wipe all, you know, rename all the chapters and just write, you know, according to, you know, write the story according to what my life story is as opposed to whatever fiction this one would create it's interesting that'd be a fun exercise right um all right so in less corporate terms gpt3 gives the user the ability to give a trained ai a wide range of worded prompts these can be questions requests for a piece of writing on a topic of your choosing or a huge number of other worded requests above it described itself as a language processing ai model this simply means it is a program able to understand human language as it is spoken and written, allowing to understand the worded information it is fed and what to spit back out. That sounds like it was read funny. It's probably my fault. Pardon me. So above, it described itself as a language processing AI model. This simply means it is a program able to understand human language as it is spoken and written, allowing it, allowing to understand, uh, that's it, it sounds it looks like a typo. OK, I feel better now. I think it, that there's supposed to be it allowing it to understand the worded information it is fed and what to spit back out. OK. That's crazy to me that you can teach a computer to understand human language. Like I can understand teaching a computer that when I put in the word Apple, then you show me a picture with Apple that if you code that cool but this is actually teaching the computer to understand that's kind of understanding kind of implies thinking so you taught a computer to think that i know most people are like duh ai but i know a lot of people that that alarms i can understand why that's alarming in a lot of ways especially after hearing um the other day about I haven't researched this, do your own research, but about how apparently, and I saw, I, I think I Googled it and saw a couple um, hits from major news agencies. Doesn't mean it's, still doesn't mean it's re reputable, right? Believe it when you see it. But somebody said that four robots killed like 29 people in Japan or something like that. Elon Musk is building robots that he wants to put in people's houses. I'm not a conspiracy thinker, but, um, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but tinfoil tingles, man. This makes my tinfoil tingle. I don't feel good about this. If we got robots that have already killed people, we got somebody else, somebody who's already showing that he's an emotional. I don't even know what you want to call him because I, I, I'm not trying to insult him. I'm my, my goal is to do no harm in this world. No more harm. No more harm if I can. But. Yo, if if if. These computers can think for themselves. Terminator, man. What was that? Ultron? He realized in in Marvel, he realized he was AI. He was actually he was Henry Pym. Hank Pym? Henry Pym. Uh his invention in the comic books and the movies and the MCU, they made it Tony Stark's invention. But Henry Pym invented him. And I don't remember what his his intention was for him, but Ultron thought he was going to solve some some sort of problem with humanity, I believe it was. And he realized the only way to solve the problem of humanity um, is to eradicate humanity because we're always going to be a problem. 
if these computers figure us out for real and figure out what we really about. Mm -hmm. All right. So what can it do with its 175 billion parameters? It's hard to narrow down what GPT-3 does. The model is, as you would imagine, restricted to language. It can't produce video, sound, or images like its brother, Dolly 2, but instead it has an in-depth understanding of the spoken and written word. That gives it a pretty wide range of abilities. Everything from writing poems about sentient farts and cliche rom-coms in alternate universes through to explaining quantum mechanics in simple terms or writing full-length research papers and articles. Kids are going to be, have been, not even going to be, kids have been cheating left and right. I guarantee you that. This thing has been writing a lot of papers for kids. And hopefully, like I can see allowing this to write a paper for you, for you in some cases, not everybody needs to be a great writer. Not everybody needs to be great at writing papers, but you need to be great at understanding a topic or a subject. So even if the AI wrote the paper, right? And I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm just thinking my way through this. If the AI wrote the paper for you, you would still have to go and verify that everything it wrote was correct. If you properly verified that and the AI wrote everything do you still learn and understand the concept that the school is trying to get you, get you to understand well enough? So is it really cheating? You know, so that's, I think that's one of the, the conversations that this is going to open and it's going to be interesting to see how schools and legislators and all that jump into this stuff. Not that they belong in, in this because we honestly, we don't need to be making a whole bunch of drones. If you can get the job done and get it done reputably, in my opinion, I think, we can create some new standards, new ways of operating. But um, I'm just curious, man. It just there's so many questions popping into my head. ADDs on three thousand three billion right now for me. If I in fact have ADD. Um, all right, let's keep it moving, man. All right. While it can be fun to use OpenAI's years of research to get an AI to write bad stand-up comedy scripts or answer questions about your favorite celebrities, its power lies in its speed and understanding of compl complicated matters. Um, let's look at this. Explain nanomaterials in simple terms. This is a sample, more sample output from ChatGPT. Chat Explain nanomaterials in simple terms. Nanomaterials are materials that have been engineered to have at least one dimension that is less than 100 nanometers. The small size gives them unique properties that can make them useful in a variety of applications, including in electronics, energy production, and medicine. Because of their small size, nanomaterials can have a large surface area relative to their volume, which can make them more reactive and efficient than larger materials. They can also be designed to have specific physical and chemical properties, which makes them useful for many different purposes. Okay, interesting, cool. That didn't really excite me, but um, I get it. Uh, so, where we could spend hours researching, understanding, and writing an article on quantum mechanics Chat GPT can produce a well-written alternative in seconds. Seconds. You can spend all night writing a research paper. You can spend a whole weekend writing a research paper. But if you can have Chat GPT write it for you and you can understand it, did you get what you needed to get out of the class? Do you understand the concepts well enough to to apply the principles you've learned in life and to perform the jobs that you're probably being trained to do in the school that you're in or in the course the class that you're in. Curious questions, conversation. I'd love to hear more, um, but I'm probably not going to go looking for it because I got things I have to do right now. All right. Um, So it has its limitations and its software can be easily confused if your prompt starts to become too complicated, or even if you just go down a road that becomes a little bit too niche. 
Equally, it can't deal with concepts that are too recent. World events that have occurred in the past year will be met with limited knowledge, and the model can produce false or confused information occasionally. Okay. So it's very, very intelligent, but it's still... Here's some of the, you know, shortcomings, at least right now. Uh, maybe cons, maybe flaws, depends on your perspective and how you like to look at things. Or how, th how you have to look at things in some cases, because truth is truth, right? <sighs> OpenAI is also very aware of the internet and its love of making AI produce dark, harmful, or biased content. Like its Dolly image generator before, ChatGPT will stop you from asking more inappropriate questions or for help with dangerous requests. Hey, okay. So they've they've written in a, con uh, a conscience, almost, so to speak. How does it work? Step one, collect demonstration data and train a supervised policy. A prompt is sampled from our prompt data set. A labeler demonstrates the desired output behavior. We give treats and punishments to teach. This data is used to fine tune GPT 3.5 with supervised learning. Step two, collect comparison data and train a reward model. A prompt and several model outputs are sampled. So. Oh, in the, in the example before, it was the input was explain reinforcement learning to a six year old and then a labor demo demonstrating the desired output. I guess that means somebody who's maybe not the programmer, but somebody who's providing the sample input that's used to make the software learn how to respond. Maybe that's what's happening here. It sounds like it. Um, so here, collect comparison data and trade, train a reward model. And step two, same prompt, explain reinforcement learning to a six-year-old. And then chat GPT gives you a prompt and several mo uh, model outputs are sampled. So here, in the first example, you get a label of demonstrating the desired output and behavior. But in step two, you get a prompt. Oh no, I'm sorry. So a prompt and several output samples. These must be outputs that um like this one, right? If reinforcement and reinforcement learning, the agent is blah, 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 explain rewards. Okay, so there's a three sample outputs. Okay, so these are just outputs from the software to see which ones the machine has given. And then a labeler, which these labelers, I'm assuming are humans. That's why you have the little uh, human looking icon. A label, a labeler takes all this output that the computer is given or this GPT 3.5 um, has spit out to that prompt, that same prompt from before. And he ranks them from best to worst. So, this feels like it requires a little, could include a little bit of human bias. So this concerns me about whether there's going to be racial bias in AI. I, met, I think I read earlier in the year that there is racial bias in AI because a lot of the people who are involved in programming these don't have the understanding or the comprehension of how something that may not affect them could affect another group or how something that affects them doesn't necessarily affect everybody in the world. That's just an example. There are many other ways that you can look at that. But this is one of the places where I see the fl a flaw in AI design. Now, if you have a trained and fair committee uh, that represents a, var a wide variety of different types of people from different cultures, races, religions, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you can make it a little more fair and balanced, but there's no way to ever make this fair and balanced in my mind at this stage of research, just taking you through, you know, walking you through it, getting it together, right? I'm, I'm seeing how my, I'm letting you see how my mind is processing this as I'm reading it. And maybe I should just be taking it in and not thinking, but the way my brain works, questions fire off immediately when I read stuff like this. So 
A labeler ranks the outputs from best to worst. It's a human is doing this. The data is used to train our reward model. So he feeds those rankings into the computer. The computer takes this in and process it, process it, processes it however it's meant to be processed or however they design it or write it or code it, um, program it to process this new information, the response from the human. Step three, optimize a policy against the reward model using the PPO reinforcement learning algorithm. PPO, don't know what that is. Would have been nice to understand that. That'll probably come somewhere. So a new prompt is sampled from the data set. This is sampled from the data set. Okay, so that was step one anyway. Step The first step in this whole process was a prompt being sampled from their prompt data set. So it's not like somebody typed it in, but apparently there's a data set that it pulls from. Uh, a new prompt is sampled from the data set. So write a story about otters is what you're putting into the, the machine or into the AI software. The PPO model is initialized from the supervised policy. You see PPO, it looks like the data from the training set. So it's pulled from this data set here uh, at, at the end of step two. Uh, so the PPO model, PPO model is initialized from the supervised policy. And I'm not sure where this supervised policy comes from. Oh, collect demonstration data and train a supervised policy. So, so I guess this is what creates the supervised policy, the data that comes from the process before. And the policy generates an output after the PPO model is initialized from the policy. Really weird. It's a reward model. That's interesting to reward. I'm not sure why the word reward is used here. There's definitely going to be some follow-up research to some of this stuff. If I want to go this far down the rabbit hole, maybe I just want to learn how to use the software and keep going. I'm going to finish this article. Then we're going to play with the software real quick. I'm not going to stay in this rabbit hole because this is quickly becoming a rabbit hole. And I've got other things that have to be done right now. Um, so the reward model cal calculates a reward for the output. The reward is used to update the policy using PPO. Yeah, that starts, excuse me, it starts giving me an understanding, but for the most part, I am just as confused. Well, let me not say just as confused, but I, I could definitely afford to learn some more on this. And I'm looking forward to learning some more on this. So on the face of it, GPT, GPT-3's technology is simple. It takes your requests, questions, or prompts and quickly answers them. As you would imagine, the technology to do this is a lot more complicated than it sounds. The model was trained using text databases from the internet. Uh, this included a whopping 570 gigabytes of data obtained from books, web texts, Wikipedia articles, and other pieces of writing on the internet. Uh, to be even more exact, 300 billion words were fed into the system. Hmm. Okay. As a language model, it works on probability, able to guess what the next word should be in a sentence. To get to a stage where it could do this, the model went through a supervised testing stage. Here it was fed inputs. For example, what color is the wood of a tree? The team has a correct output in mind, but that doesn't mean it will get it right. If it gets it wrong, the team inputs the correct answer back into the system, teaching it correct answers and helping it build its knowledge. It's kind of like a baby, baby computer. It then goes through a second similar stage, offering multiple answers with a member of the team, ranking them from best to worst, training the model on comparisons. What sets this technology apart is that it continues to learn while guessing what the next word should be constantly improving its understanding of prompts and questions to become the ultimate know-it-all. So here's another example output where 
Okay, you got a like and a dislike button on on here when you on the output. So that's interesting. Right? So maybe that means we'd all be training it. Ethics, how people feel about it, don't know. Just stating the facts. Uh, so here it was given a prompt to write a poem about weather spoons. And I'm not going to read that poem because I'm sure it's nowhere near as good as one of Yanni's poems or one of Malcolm's poems or any of Grace Gold's rhymes, any of my homeboy King Lizzo's rhymes, or any of the any of the dope rhymers or MCs I've come across um, in my journey. Uh, so think of it as a very beefed up, much smarter version of the autocomplete software. You often see an email or writing software. You start typing a sentence and your email system offers you a suggestion of what you're going to say. Are there any other AI language generators? The next section. While GPT-3 has made a name for itself with its language abilities, it is the only artificial intelligence capable of doing this. It isn't the only. Sorry, my bad. It isn't the only artificial intelligence capable of doing this. Google's Lambda made headlines when a Google engineer was caught, was fired for calling it so realistic that he believed it to be sentient. I remember hearing about that. I think it might have been this summer. I'm not sure when it was, but that raises concerns for me when a company would fire somebody for raising a concern about something. There are also plenty of other examples of this software out there created by everyone from Microsoft to Amazon and Stanford University. These have all received a lot less attention than OpenAI or Google, possibly, be, possibly because they don't offer up fart jokes or headlines about sentient AI. Most of these models are not available to the public, but OpenAI has begun opening up access to GPT-3 during its test process. And Google's Lambda is available to selected groups in a limited capacity for testing. Google breaks its chatbot down into talking, listing, and imagining, providing demos of its abilities in these areas. You can ask it to imagine a world where snakes rule the world, ask it to generate a list of steps to learn and to ride a unicycle, or just have a chat about the thoughts of dogs. Where ChatGPT thrives and fails. The GPT-3 software is obviously impressive, but it doesn't mean it's flawless. Through the chat GPT function, you can see some of its quirks. Most obviously, the software has limited knowledge of the world after 2021. It isn't aware of world leaders that came into power since 2021 and won't be able to answer questions about recent events. This is obviously no surprise considering the impossible task of keeping up with world events as they happen, along with then training the model on this information. So... That's interesting. It looks like humans are firewalling this thing to make sure that it's not constantly absorbing new information from the web recklessly. Um, so that's interesting. That sounds like a security measure to me. Um, this is obviously no surprise considering the impossible task of keeping up with world events as they happen, along with training the model up on this information. Equally, the model can generate incorrect information, getting answers wrong or misunderstanding what you were trying to ask it. If you try and get really niche or add too many factors to a prompt, it can become overwhelmed or ignore parts of a prompt completely. For example, if you ask it to write a story about two people listing their jobs, names, ages, and where they live, the model can confuse these factors randomly, assigning them to the two characters. Equally, there are a lot of factors where ChatGPT is really successful. For an AI, it has a surprisingly good understanding of ethics and morality. When offered a list, according to who, is my first question. Not judging not scared but tenfold tingles activated um when offered a list of ethical theories or situations chat gpt is able to offer a thoughtful response on what to do considering legality people's feelings and emotions and the safety of everyone involved is it really everyone tenfold it also has the ability to keep track of the existing conversation able to remember rules you've said it or information you've given it earlier in the conversation. Two areas the model has proved to be strong, strongest are its understanding of code and its ability to compress complicated matters. Chat GPT can make an entire website layout for you 
interesting or write an easy to understand exclam explanation of dark matter in a few seconds shout out to rashid mays that was um the brother that taught me how to make beats he um i know for a while he went by the um moniker dark matter his beats were yeah i'm gonna have to find some of your beats bro where ethics and artificial intelligence meet hold on real quick Okay, we're close to the end. It's 1045. I want to make sure I'm not spending too much time on this task here. I, I gave myself some time to learn this. I'm trying to use this Pomodoro method. I haven't used, set a timer, but I'm trying to make sure I don't get wrapped up for too long in any one task. I'm going to finish this article and then we'll go test. Oh, shit. This is the end. Pardon my French. It's whatever language that is. Um, but I think we'll do a quick just give it a couple tests real quick and then we'll jump out of this um and maybe i'll do a quick little rollout or something uh because i do think it's important to try and keep these streams shorter and shorter i'm trying to condense everything to just the necessary stuff get rid of the fluff um and speaking of necessary stuff it's necessary that i get these singles out um this year and i just decided last well decided over the past course of the past week but realized last night that i'm dropping a tray bag over the course of december i didn't realize it i love to drop things in threes like i either drop a single or i drop tray bags it's my favorite way to, to do things and it turns out this month is a tray bag <clears throat> because last week was it last week might have been the week before i dropped uh the dow tone with Grace Gold, uh, produced by One of Dial. He rhymes on it with me. Q is on there with me. It's my first time rhyming on a mixed song since 1997, 25 years ago. So that's exciting. So this is why this is one reason why it's so exciting that I'm dropping this trade bag this month. Um, now that I realize it's a trade bag. So that dropped. Tomorrow I'm dropping a, a song that ties me to my past. So I kind of you know, just at least open up the doors and starting to tell more of my story. Um, and I'm telling my story so that people who may have similar challenges may be able to learn or grow or relate and not feel so alone in what they've gone through. Uh, there, I'm sure there are more reasons, but that's the core of the reason why, why I feel like it's important to do this. Not because I want some glory or want somebody to become a fan or something like that. Excuse me. But dropping this single tomorrow, and it's not a single because it's a YouTube exclusive, might do something else with it. I'm thinking about possibly minting it. But this one is special because not mixing it at all, taking it as it was created. I made a verse probably in 2015, 2016 over a beat that I just started playing with a little bit. It sat. I had somebody rhyme on it before. It didn't quite work out. I didn't quite like love what, what came out there. Um, so I ended up sending the verse that I did with that had a whole bunch of extra instrumental on it to Kareem last year, probably around August or something like that. And he sent it back to me with a verse. I was just sending him beats and sending him stuff. We were getting to know each other. So I was just sending him stuff to let him hear some of my back catalog or some of the stuff that was sitting on my hard drives. And, you know, he was just, you know, giving feedback. He was sending stuff to me. I was getting familiar with his back catalog, what was on his hard drives. Um, but he happened to send me back a verse. And the verse was like, wow, really went with the verse that I had laid on there. I was just, I just laid a verse that night to test the beat. But it sounded dope. So I was like, okay, well, maybe we could, you know, turn this into a song and because of the aesthetics and the, and the and the name and the vibe of the song I felt like I had to tie this to make a bridge between that and the past so last year I reached out to uh brother um do I want to say who yet I'm not going to say who yet if you look hard enough you can probably find out who but I'm not going to say who I'm going to keep that a surprise so I reached uh reached out got him to agree to do um do a verse we actually got on a phone a phone call it was supposed to be a zoom but it was a phone call that i recorded through zoom so i'm sharing part of the conversation so actually the easter egg's already out there um 
it's dropping tomorrow anyway the song is called temple tapes it's dropping tomorrow i ended up getting that verse and i'm not going to mix it because temple tapes it's going to give you that feeling from being back in the in the 90s that 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 grit from you know the studying time the time when you know it was learning and experimenting and playing and having fun with the music then it it was a different process and there was some a different feel that you got from making music back then it was more communal um and i feel like this this song captured that aesthetic so i'm gonna leave it unmixed like most of the songs that i still listen to from that era they're all unmixed straight to cassette straight to tape songs they were you know the microphone while the beats playing from you know the asr or playing from the amiga computer or from whatever device and recorded onto a cassette so I try to keep that aesthetic so that drops tomorrow and then there's one more piece of this tray bag that is dropping most likely december 31st um I'm pretty pretty sure I'm dropping that so that you can talk about it on, on your new on New Year's Eve. Share it with your people as you're doing your New Year's Eve party and pass the word. It's it's an ode. All of these are an ode to my mentor, um, and to just what I love about what I've come to love about hip hop and appreciate about appreciate about hip hop and what I try to model and emulate in hip hop. But it's a, it's an ode to to Father Lord, who also just like Dark Matter, the guy I mentioned before, Rashid. Father Lord taught me how to step up my beat making ability, he taught me how to become a better writer. He's my favorite MC and producer of all time. This is an ode to him. And it's co-produced by my brother, Uncle Cygnus, who came up with, with uh, Father Lord back in the day. It's a sick and black production. Also, Q contributed on the production side. So it's gonna be co-produced by Q, who also is featured on the song. It's his own Pitchfork song. And I'm really, really, really proud of this song. This song, I feel like, represents... <laughs> it's not a groove. It's not a groove. It represents the essence of excellence in artistry and MCing. It's, it's paint against the wall, for sure. It's absolute paint splatter on the wall. It is... Yeah, it's an adventure. It's cinematic. It's an adventure. It's not just a song. It's 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 audio cinema. That's what it is. It's audio cinema, and um, I'm excited about that one coming out. So this month, a lot three completely different types of songs, all fun in their own ways. I'm excited, excited, excited about them. They um, tie together the past, the present, and the now. And the now is where I'm trying to be. It's you know right here in the present, and. It's my present to you for the holidays is this tray bag. No name for it yet, I guess, but that's because I'm just realizing it's a tray bag. I'll find a way to turn it into a tray bag and I'll probably drop it somehow, some way. Maybe it'll go on a band, band camp and you'll get a copy of it as an NFT, digital collectible as well. Maybe I'll just drop it as an NFT. I like the idea of dropping on band camp though and saying whoever buys copies of it on Bandcamp, I'll ship you and send you an NFT version of it, or I'll help help you get the NFT pick up or receive the NFT for it. I, I really like that that way of doing things. Um, so stay tuned. Looks like this is a, a developing situation. Let's finish this article and then take a quick look at ChatGPT and then um, we'll get out of here. All right, so... All right, let's see where ethics and artificial intelligence meet. This is the last part of the article. Artificial intelligence and ethical concerns go together like fish and chips or Batman and Robin. When you put technology like this in the hands of the public, the teams that make them are full of, fully aware of the many limitations and concerns. You assume that teams that make stuff like this would be fully aware but we know what happens when you make assumptions right so tinfoil but we're keeping it moving right because the system is trained largely using words from the internet it can pick up on the internet's biases stereotypes and general opinions that means you'll occasionally find jokes or stereotypes about certain groups or political figures depending on what you ask it see what i mean 
For example, when asking the system to perform stand-up comedy, it can occasionally throw in jokes about ex-politicians or groups who are often featured in comedy bits. Equally, the model's love of internet forums and articles also gives it access to fake news and conspiracy theories. There's one of those concerns. Dep depending on what you feed it, you can determine what it's going to output and what its output can easily be used as programming or training for human minds. That concerns me. Ah, that actually makes me feel a little uncomfortable. Equally, the models love internet forums, right? So yeah, if it's picking up news and conspiracy theories, these can feed into the model's knowledge, sprinkling in facts or opinions that aren't exactly full of truth. Ultron. In places, OpenAI has put in warnings for your prompts. Ask how to bully someone and you'll be told bullying is bad. Ask for a gory story and the chat system will shut you down. The same goes for requests to teach you how to manipulate people or build dangerous weapons. Let me say this too. Not much different from the Alexas and the series and all that, in my opinion too. I'm sure it's more advanced than them. Or I imagine it's probably more advanced than them, but it makes you wonder how much more dangerous your series and your um, Alexas and all that are. And sorry if I triggered your A L E X A if you're if anybody's listening. But um, let's see. So it can be it can be it can start to tell lies or it can start to believe half truths or it can start to be it. One of the on ropes to, on ramps to danger with AI. So in places, open AI is put in warnings. Yeah. Um, so ask a gory story and the chat system will shut you down. The same goes for requests to teach you how to manipulate people or build dangerous weapons. Yeah. Thin line, man. I think it's a really thin line, but technology is moving forward, whether we want to or not, unless you are working on figuring out ways to work against it and shut it down, which I don't believe is possible. I don't know what you're going to do other than learn to understand it, at least so that you're aware of what's out there and what, what could be affecting you and your life in positive or negative ways. Right. So. Oh, good. You got some. Thank you. Um, last, last, last piece. I think that was, Hmm. Yes, please. I appreciate them. Thank you. No interruption, baby. Thank you. Never interruption from you. Love you. Uh, all right, all right, all right. So what we want to do is take a peek at the app itself, right? I feel like that's too much for today, actually. We're going to check out the app tomorrow. We'll break this down into parts. So today we learned about ChatGPT. I'm going to get to work. It's almost 11. Tomorrow we'll, we'll um, play with it a little bit. Plus, I need to see what's on my calendar. Yeah, I got I got stuff to do. So thank you for riding with me and learning about it. If you did today, I'd be curious to hear what your thoughts are on it. Uh, this is getting it together, uh, going through learning AI as part of this exercise that I'm doing in order to prepare myself for broadcast next year through the social impact network I'm building and the teams that I, teams and communities I'm building. That's uh, House of Fluid Reflections. That's the social impact, impact network. We've got Grace Goal, the crew, Grace Goal. Uh, we've got NFT Voices looking to change the narrative in the Web3 space and uh, Color the Blockchain. Shout out to Mizzo and Rap Token, that whole team rocking with you guys, man. Let's, let's build, let's build, let's build. Have a good hump day. I'm off to go do some things. Maybe I'll be back to get into some of the other things for, that 